Good morning, and this is Gary Glassford, and this is AM America. My guest this morning, this morning is the creator of a TV show that originally had a lukewarm reception in the mid-1960s on network television. Star Trek has become the most successful syndicated series in television history. It has spawned five hit films, 70 novels, and now a new syndicated TV series, Star Trek The Next Generation. Not bad for something that people originally thought would never work. With us today is the creator of Star Trek, Mr. Gene Roddenberry. Hello, Mr. Roddenberry. Well, Mr. Roddenberry, I understand that one of your major problems in getting Star Trek started was that of censorship, particularly that of the 1960s. Could you comment on this? Well, I've been a, a television writer for 16 years, and I discovered that uh, the TV was very much censored. In fact, censorship was getting worse and worse. You couldn't talk about things like prejudice or um, sex or uh, labor management or war, things like that. So I decided that I was going to quit TV unless I was able to write about the things that I wanted to. Like, I, after all, uh, a writer is an artist who needs to write about things that, uh, to be open about new things. Then I thought of Jonathan Swift, who faced a similar problem a couple of centuries ago. And he wanted to write about crooked prime ministers and evil kings and queens, so he invented Lilliput. And he did things like that. And so you read that as a child, and you think, wow, monster people, isn't that neat? And tiny people. And you get out of college, and you, you read the same thing and you say, hmm, insightful views of his time. So I thought to myself, well, maybe if I created polka dot people and, and uh, off on some far distant planet, I could write about things like war and, and like that. And it worked. In fact, it apparently went over the network censors' heads, but the 14-year-olds in our audience knew exactly what we were talking about. That's very interesting. Well, Mr. Roddenberry, did you ever envision nearly 25 years ago that Star Trek would develop such a cult fo following that it would actually become a part of our culture? I thought it was something that people would appreciate. Uh, I thought that, you know, somewhere down the line in future years that someone would come up and say, well, I, I saw that thing Star Trek. You know, I liked it. But the phenomenon I wasn't prepared for. You can't prepare for things like that. Yeah. What kind of idiot is going to sit down one day and think, well, let's see, what will I do this afternoon? I think I'll create a phenomenon. <laughs> now, it was a surprise to me that it kept uh, every year that it came back. Well, Mr. Rodberry, all of us have or Star Trek fans have a favorite Star Trek episode. What's your favorite? Um, the City on the Edge of Forever. Second, uh, for a touch of humor, and I wish we could have done more of it, was uh, The Trouble with Tribbles. And the third, which was uh, uh, we used the pilot, uh, the menagerie, and became the, the
Paramedics that paramedics uh, showed me a script that they were uh, planning to go with uh, about uh, the Enterprise being run by a group of cadets. After getting my stomach under control, I, I said, how could you, you do this to my children? How could you torture my children and torture me? And then a paramedic told me that uh, they wanted uh, someone to do this, but it was impossible for anyone to do it. Now that perked my ears up. Say, I, I'm uh, the the word impossible uh, means nothing to me. I I like to challenge, and so I set up about to do it. And uh, also, I enjoy working again. Interesting. Star Trek: The Next Generation, I understand, like the original, will deal with some problems of our contemporary society. Could you give me an example of one of the problems current today? Uh, that uh, you plan to deal with in the new series? Well, everyone liked the way we handled the problems in the 1960s, the equality of women, which was coming about, and the mixed crew. And uh, uh, people tend to forget that back in 1965, uh, everyone threw up their hands in horror about that. The, uh, they said that nobody would watch that, or no sponsor would buy the show, and so on. But uh, it uh, gradually began to come about. But those were the battles of the, uh, of the 90s, or of the 60s. But what are the battles of the 90s? Well, one of them is drugs. And we plan to present, uh, uh, do a presentation on Star Trek The Next Generation about that. But it won't be a, a, a kind of a shoot em up and send them to jail type of thing. In my opinion, a drug abuse is something that, that comes from a, 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 an inner uh, unhappiness in people. That people that use drugs aren't uh, bad people, but are, are rather become weak and needful because of certain conditions in society. And I'd like to uh, uh, do a, a Star Trek on that, where we attack the issue of drugs and try to explain it. Well, in this new series, The Next Generation, how important are special effects going to be? Special effects will definitely be a part of the program. But within the, the limits of a, a reasonable television budget. So we'll have to make do with characterization and relationships and things like that. But uh, there definitely will be uh, uh, special effects. But uh, we plan to have some uh, surprises and, and things will excite you and shock you, which I think is what television is about and, and which is what we're striving for. Well, how did you? come up with the uh, characters for the original series, Star Trek. Uh, who did you draw from in creating these, and who is your favorite? Well, like most writers, they all came from different pieces of me. I, uh, Captain Kirk was the airline pilot. I wish I'd been like uh, calm and in control and all of that. And Spock was very definitely from a memory I had that every time I screwed myself up in life was because of emotion. And also, I, I noticed that women seem to like a, a touch of evil. So I thought maybe a character that looked like Lucifer would become popular. And then McCoy came from uh, family memories. So all of them were little pieces of me. So it's hard to, to, to pick a favorite. They're all my children, and I love them all very dearly. Well, thank you, Mr. Roddenberry, for your insightful comments. This is Gary Glassford for AM America.